Okay, guys, so this is going to be a video on how to reset the local uh, account on a, on a Windows, like a local account password on a Windows 10 instance. And uh, this doesn't pertain necessarily to the mic. If you sign into your computer or sign into the computer trying to reset a password, with, if you sign into that account with um, a, an on Microsoft Online account instead of a local account, I don't believe this method works. This method is only going to work for local accounts that reside on that Windows 10 instance. And so um, as an example, this would be like uh, computers that, if you're an IT guy and you work at the office, then any of your computers at the office are probably signing in with some domain credentials, unless, you've, unless of course, you've integrated with Azure AD and you're using cloud services. Mike, likely, you're just using on-prem AD. But anyhow, so it's local accounts only, not Microsoft accounts. OK, so this is a, uh, a disclaimer here that the, set, the configuration you're going to be doing here, you can potentially mess up your Windows instance. And um, also, I wouldn't suggest using this for malicious purposes. Um, let's see, what else do I want to include? Uh, make sure you follow the steps. If you do these in the wrong order, obviously, you can make your Windows instance not as good as it used to be. Um, the other one I wanted to add in there was that if you use encrypted file systems, I would suggest paying attention to um, the, re the uh, capabilities of that encrypted file system. If I remember correctly, maybe this doesn't apply to Windows 10, but EFS, Microsoft's EFS solution, I think did encryption based off of the password or something that of a user account. So if you were to reset the password using this method, there is a possibility that you might lose your encrypted data. So pay very close attention to that. I'm not responsible for you losing your data. This is literally just how to reset a password. And uh, you know that's the disclaimer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I used to do this same method in Windows 7. The file that you uh, work with is, is different than Windows 7 in Windows 10. But basically, this is the scenario. We've got a computer we can't sign into like this, right? I don't know my password. Hit the reset password. I don't know any of these because when I created my account, I didn't fill any of these out. Um, the use password reset disk doesn't work in, in a VM environment like this scenario. Um, there's probably a fix for this, but I'm not going to worry about that. What we're going to do is we're going to replace the executable for this accessibility button Make your with a command prompt, an elevated command prompt. And then inside that elevated command prompt, you can do the necessary commands to reset your password. So, so what we're going to do, though, is you need to go to Microsoft.com and you need to download the Windows 10 installation media kit. And so this is a cool little tool that um, downloads Windows 10 and either can download to an ISO file or it can download it to a USB drive, a bootable USB drive. So depending on which system you need to reset, so if it's a VM like I'm resetting here, then you need the ISO file. If it's a physical machine like your desktop, then you need the USB bootable disk. Or you can take the ISO and burn it to a DVD. But it's, it, in this day and age, it's not likely. I don't think they'll even have a DD, DVD drive. I don't, I don't personally have them on any of my systems anymore. So. Anyhow, so let's get started. So what we're going to do is um, I already downloaded the ISO file. I'm going to take this, this VM here. I'm going to make them boot to the ISO. I've already mounted it in the CD-ROM. And uh, i got to hit Escape here. All right, so now I've got my boot menu. I'm going to say boot off the CD drive, hit and key to boot it. So now it's booting into the Windows 10 setup ISO file. And so this is literally the same ISO that you would use to install Windows 10 on your machine if it was a fresh install. You um, just wanted to keep in mind that when you download the Windows 10 ISO, don't download it from anywhere else but Microsoft.com. Don't get Windows 10 from somewheres or illegal site. There's no reason to do that. This ISO comes from Microsoft. It's free. It doesn't come with licensing. It's not stealing Windows 10. This is literally a legitimate file, so it just doesn't come with a license key. So when, it, when, it, when you boot into Windows setup like this, go ahead and click on Next, and you're going to want to click on Repair Your Computer, not Install Now. Repair Your Computer. And then I want to go to Troubleshoot. And then I want to find command prompt. Sometimes it's over here. On um, one of the ones I did today was actually over here. So um, I don't know. Just find the one that says command prompt. Click it. You're going to get a command prompt like this. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is find the disk that has your Windows instance that you're trying to reset the password. So um, this, is a, this is a miniature Windows environment you're in right now. It's called Windows PE, I believe. And um, it's kind of like an installation Windows instance. It has some of the core, uh, core components of Windows, such as driver identification and stuff like that. But it's primarily used to install full-fledged Windows in, um, environments. So what I'm going to do, though, is um, it's, there's likely it's just going to be C drive. And this will be your, your um, particular instance of Windows that you want to reset the password on. In this case, it is. You can see my user right there, DM706. But if you didn't, if it wasn't C and it was a different drive like D, I mean, I guess you can kind of go through these two and, and iterate through the drives and find which one looks right. You can also use a program called Disk Part, 
And this part's built into Windows. You can use it on this WinP environment, or you can use it in your Windows 10 instance. It's a disk partition tool is what it's for. And so I want to say list volume. And I want to look at the volumes on my system. And what I want to try to find is the volume that's the biggest. So this is a 59 gigs GB, and it's drive C. So likely this is my bootable drive. This is the volume that's going to have the Windows I want to reset. So now you hit exit, and we go to the C drive, and we can validate that, right? But what we want to do now is on this this Windows um, drive, I'm going to go to system. It's 32 under Windows. So CD backslash Windows and then CD system 32, or you can just type it all in one string. It doesn't matter. It'll get to the same place. Now what you want to do is you want to take this utilman.exe, and I'm going to copy it off to utilman.exe.old because I want to make a copy of this because I want to save it and replace it back. But this, you need to put this back when you're done with this method. Let's do uh, copy command.exe to utilman.exe. So I'm going to overwrite utilman with command.exe, which command is the command prompt, literally what you're looking at right now. That's command.exe, this, this typing console here. So now I've got utilman's been replaced with command.exe, which is great. So now I'm going to do a shutdown, reboot it. And it's going to come back into the Windows instance. Now, I'm not going to boot off the ISO. I'm going to boot off of the Windows instance that I'm trying to reset the password for. So uh, let's go ahead and try to log in. This, remember, this is the place that we can't figure out how long because we don't know the password. So I'm now, remember, I showed you this accessibility button. Now, when I click on it, look what happens. What? That's crazy. I get a command prompt. I haven't even logged into the computer. This is an elevated command prompt. OK, that aside, let's go ahead and do a net user. And this should show me all the user accounts on my system. So you can see DM706. That's the one I want to reset. Or if I don't want to reset the password for that one, I can also just create a new account, right? So you could say net user, new admin, type in a password, and then say add. And I literally, now if I say net user, you'll see my new user there, new admin. And then if you want that to be an admin, you also need to say net local group, um, new admin, add. Account already exists. No, I didn't do that right. Uh, administrators. My bad. I had to specify the group first. Net net local ad, uh, local group administrators. Administrators is the local group for admins on the computer. And then new admins, the user account. And I said add. So now if I say net local group administrators, I didn't spell that right, administrators, it'll show you that DM706 and new admin are now local admins. And so I just literally created a new account called new admin that I can sign into this computer with. The other thing you can do is just say net user DM706, and then we'll type in the password. That literally reset the password. So now I can come over here and I can say, boom, I just logged in. That easy. So I have literally just reset the password on a system. I didn't, I didn't break it. Everything should be functional as it was before. I'm not going to have any issues with my environment. Um, if you have encrypted disks, that might be a different story. Trying to remember how, like EFS, if you use EFS, any Windows encryption that's based off of the password of user account, um, you might run a new issue there, so pay very close attention to that. Um, and uh, I guess that's it. So the other thing that you're going to want to do, though, is before you say, hey, good, I'm all done, you still have that basic exploit going on your computer here. So what you need to do is you need to reverse it. And I'll show you that really quick here. Let's just go ahead and say, control, delete. I want to reboot. I'm going to reboot back into that ISO again, and I'm going to put the files back. As soon as it boots. Come on, Betsy. You can do this. Okay, hit Escape. Boot back into the CD-ROM. Say, yes, I want to boot to the CD-ROM. And it's going to take its pretty time. This is actually backed by a pretty fast SSD. Um, no, maybe not. This is on a spindle. My bad. Maybe that's why it's slow. Hit next, repair your computer, troubleshoot, command prompt. I want to delete, C. Now remember, don't run these commands if you haven't run the first commands that I told you to run. So, okay, just wanted to make sure you understood that because we're going to delete system32 util man. And if you hadn't made a copy of it, we're going to basically get rid of it entirely. You won't have it anymore. So now I'm going to say rename system32 util man dot old to util man.exe. Now I just put the old util man back in place. The command prompt isn't there anymore. And uh, now I should be able to say shut down. Uh, I don't know why I can't do that. It worked last time, didn't it? Oh, you know why? Because I was under system 32.
There's no path statement for that. I don't know. You can just close this box. It'll reboot. That's how WinPE works. Or maybe not. I don't know what I'm talking about, apparently. So we're going to say turn off your PC, though. I don't want to. I don't, I don't think this is the option I want. Yeah, maybe it is. We'll just go ahead and click that. I think it should boot right into Windows 10 instead. And I just wanted to simulate that um, or show you that that um, the the accessibility button is no longer a command prompt. It's back to the accessibility feature that it's supposed to be. And then uh, that's basically going to be it for this video as soon as we get in. This works really well um, at the office if you are, if you're one of the IT staff and you um, want to have like this issue often. What you can do is you can make a Pixie server, and a Pixie server. This is going to get way beyond just resetting it for home use, but a Pixie server you can network boot to to the Windows 10 ISO essentially, and then be able to type right in those commands without like taking a USB stick around with you or whatnot. You can just network boot right into them, which is one of the ones one of the ways that I did it. Okay, so let's go ahead and, oh, you can also see my new admins here, but watch when I click this, Make it's back to the way that it was. So there's no more command prompt. Um, and that's gonna be the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed, thanks for watching. And remember, messing it up is your fault. <laughs>